I know a lot of people were looking to take a buy at this specific price action in here, right? Now, let's invalidate it. Let's break it down. So the first thing you see, we have our trading range here, right? Now, this is more of like a descending wedge. We have our initial change of character here, you know, seller climax, automatic reaction and starts phase eight, right? We start going into a consolidation. Now, usually, right, obviously when you have phase A, what's the purpose of phase A? To stop the prior trend. Then you move into phase B. Right. Phase B, what they're doing in phase B, they're building the cause. Time is passing. Opinions are forming. Right. They're building liquidity and filling, filling their orders. So you do want to see nice reactions. So can you see like the strength of these reactions? We're getting nice big candles. Now, when you're looking for these accumulations, you want to pay attention to what reactions you actually get in from the buy side, because in an accumulation, remember, they're filling buy orders. So if they're filling buy orders, you want to be seeing nice, strong reactions, nice, strong candles. Now, when we go down to let's say this lower time frame, you know, once we had our potential, you know, spring down here, and obviously we did get a sign of strength. One thing that kind of was like a little bit of a red flag to me, which made me a little bit more hesitant and a little bit more defensive on other buys as we come back, was you see how we failed to break out of the trading range? Like, yes, I know this is a potential type one, and most of the time you can see take a trade on this break here, but like you don't want to see price fail to break these highs here. You know, why are we failing to break and exit this trading range? You know, like if we're seeing, because remember when we have the sign of strength, that's when the schematic is completed. That's phase D. So if we're in phase D and they filled all their buy orders, why is it difficult for them to simply just trade, you know, 10, 20 pips higher? Now that's the first red flag. Now the second red flag, uh, this is the waiting room. Yeah, now check this out. Look at the price action that came in. So I see some people, they was trying to buy out of this accumulation. Now, obviously, I took a buy in here, right? It ended up going like a one to eight. Uh, Shakira was like 30% or something like that. I have to check MetaTrader and then ended up coming and taking us out. But I want to show you guys like this trade here that a lot of people were looking at, which you shouldn't have been. Um, and I want to clarify it. So first things first, right? Obviously we know this is our potential spring sign of strength. Now we already know there's a few red flags because we didn't exit the trading range completely. So that's already putting you on a little bit of defense. And remember when you are taking trades, like imagine you have to convince someone on why you're taking that trade. So like sit down and weigh out the pros and the cons. So when you're starting to look at a trade and there's more cons than pros, there's more signs that's going to go against you. You obviously don't take the trade. Now, let's say you're getting to a point where you have like multiple reasons to take the trade, but you're seeing reasons to not take the trade stack up. This is when you just lower the amount of risk on that trade. Right. And when we say risk, Again, you got to start thinking in probabilities versus possibilities. A lot of people think, oh, you know, trades are either going to hit my stop loss, hit my take profit, and it's a 50 50. Well, no, right? How many reasons do you have for this trade to go with you? How many reasons do you have for this trade to go against you? So, for example, right? When we obviously, you know, start breaking here, right, and we get this nice reaction. Now, I like this reaction to the upside. This was nice. Again, it's just when we failed to break the high, it was a little bit like, mm, you know. So obviously, what do we do now? We come in and we measure because we want to see that mitigation, right? So as we come down here, right, by the way, I was looking at Euro futures as well. Um, and Euro futures literally comes and taps right into the 50%. Uh, obviously, Euro USD missed slightly. But when people were looking out of this little reaccumulation here, it didn't do anything. And furthermore, it's not even a valid reaccumulation either, right? Why is it not a valid reaccumulation? Well, number one, right? To validate a reaccumulation, you need to see a distribution, right? Price needs to give you a distro, right? Trading range, free drives, manipulation, break. Because what's happening in the reaccumulation is basically is the distro is going to be driven by the buyers. And what they're doing is they're taking profit from orders that are like slightly lower. So let's say when they get in the orders down here, right? And they want to reaccumulate, they bring price up. Now they're going to distribute price because they're taking their profits, right? So you want to see price start to distribute. Now, usually, obviously, when you see that distribution, and again, this is, we're going to invalidate a trade here. When you see that distribution, remember, they're taking those profits. And now there's only really two things that happen that get us into a trade. We either distribute to come back down to our point of interest, you know, those 50s or those 80s, or we obviously have the distribution. We then start to accumulate and then jump across the creek. So if you don't see a lower time frame distro, if you don't see a lower time frame accumulation, guess what? It's not a reaccumulation. It's basically just like... There's a lot of buzzwords now in this industry, but it's just a trap, right? And again, what what sort of trap is it? Well, typical high highs, higher lows, right? Everyone's buying right the higher low, and then it's going to break. So 
Again, this is not a reaccumulation, right? This is just the lowest form of order flow that maintains nothing. Furthermore, right, this literally didn't do anything either. It literally failed to break anything. This was the or the supply we had to overcome. And what caused the break of this? Well, this sell to buy. Remember how they get their orders filled. They have to enter sales first to bring price lower so they can reach areas where there's more buy orders because at each price point, there's a certain amount of buy orders that are available. So let's say, for example, you want to go to the store and buy it. I say to you, I bet, go to the store and go buy me, you know, a thousand packs of gum. Okay. If that store only has 10 packs of gum, you can only buy 10. You then have to go to the next store, the next store, the next store, the next store before you can now go to wherever you need to go and do what you have to do. So it's the same sort of thing when they fill their orders, right? They'll sell. And as they're coming lower, it's entering more buy orders, more buy orders. So they're hedging, they're taking two positions. So we need to see that mitigation. And if price, right, is above here, this is called premium price. We don't buy from premium, right? So this, re if, even if you saw it as a reaccumulation, which it's not a reaccumulation, right? Let me guys know in the chat if you know why that's not a reaccumulation. I want to put a one 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 in the chat if you know why that's not a reaccumulation. I did just explain it, but I can explain it again. Um, but again, that's not that reaccumulation. And if you don't, if you want me to explain it again, just do a two, two, two. Um, yeah, it didn't distro. And it has no cause and effect. It has zero cause and effect whatsoever. It doesn't even have free drives exactly, right? So, and there's no manipulation there at all. So this is not a POI that we're looking to take trades out of. Now, let's just say for whatever reason, <laughs> you, you, you said, okay, this is my reaccumulation, but it's not. Software update. No, thank you. No. Later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the lower time frame now. And let's see what happens when price comes in here on the lower time frame. Um, where is it? All right. Some people are looking at this as an accumulation. All right. Now, number one, the POI is already off. So that's a reason we're not even going on to the lower time frames. So I don't even have an alert sitting here. My alert was at the 50%. So I'm not even looking at the chart here. I'm not too sure who this is, but I'll let you in. <laughs> but yeah, right. Now look at this, right? If we're seeing an accumulation, remember, they're filling buy orders over time, right? Phase A, guys, what is phase A? Their first buy order because it's their first interaction of demand. All right, imagine, right, this, this, my phone here. Imagine it's a hot plate, right? If I touch this and it's hot, am I going to keep my hand or am I going to move it away? move it away now let me ask you this what speed am i going to move my hand away am i going to if it's really hot am i going to move it slowly or am i going to oi, hot right i want to move fast same thing here if this is our seller's climax and this is our automatic reaction why is the reaction so poor why is price slowly chudging and chudging and chudging away because it's setting up for a redistro right if this is a buy order being filled by with bullish intent right you want to be seeing Set, prices coming in, interacting with demand, touching the hot plate, sellers climax, automatic reaction, high volume, large bullish candlesticks. It, this is not buy orders being filled. This is sellers taking profit, right? Just how the reaccumulations formed, redistros are formed in the same way. When sellers are bringing price lower, right, they're going to start taking profit. And obviously, as they're taking profit, they're not entering a lot of buy orders. So what they're doing, right, you're going to see the small reactions, just how we see here. So that's already like another major flag. So think about it, right? Let's let's weigh up the pros and cons of this. And then we're talking about invalidation, right? So, okay, higher time frame, you know, POI. When I say the higher time frame POI, and so these are the pros. Higher time frame POI, right? Obviously, all the way on the daily, right? And the four hour, we have this big, 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 big ass reaccumulation, right? You know, we can, we can see the distro, we can see the accumulation. Um and yeah, all right, we obviously come down, we're into discount, and we're seeing some buy orders being filled. Okay, so we've got reasons. Now, when I'm seeing this accumulation potentially, okay, right, potential accumulation, completing itself, nice reactions. But where is my POI, right? My POI, I'm looking in here, this is the manipulation, all right? Now, inside of your POI, what you can do to kind of know a little bit more if price is going to come lower is look for imbalances. You see how we have all this imbalance down here and all this empty space. Price likes to fill the imbalances. So I'm not even, and so I'm not even in the lower time from over here because there's no confluence. You know, what did this, it's not a reaccumulation, obviously, but if it was a reaccumulation, 
right? What did it do? Nothing. Now, if this was a valid reaccumulation and we managed to exit our trading range now, I right, bet, and price now wants to come down, okay, I'll consider you. But we don't even have a valid accumulation. We're failing to break supply, right? We're at premium price. We have imbalance lower. So we have all these reasons to be not looking at this area as a POI. And there's no manipulation too. And there's no cause and effect, right? Identify a valid schematic. Make sure you validate it. You can clearly see phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D, phase E. If you can't see the phases, it's because it's not a valid schematic. Now, again, if you do struggle like uh, identifying valid schematics, go watch all the videos that we, we did in the chat. I'm going to create a lot more. Um, last few weeks have been pretty busy. That's why you didn't see a lot posted in the chat. But obviously, no, we're back now. Um, but anyway, right? So does this make sense? Why we're not even looking on the lower time frame here? I'd even, I'm not even at the chart. My alert is sitting at the 50, right? I mean, it was specifically on Euro futures um, where I had the alert set because the futures is the raw price and it's the real price. Um, but yeah, so we're not even on the lower time frame there. Now, let's say after all those reasons, you're like, ah, I bet I still want to take the trade. Why do you want to take the trade? Is it because this is because and this is another thing, right? You have to get your psychology right, guys. Like I promise you, yeah, the key to trading is not technical analysis. Like it's part of it, but it's not what you do, it's the place it comes from. Because if you're going to the chart with the mindset of, oh, I need to take a trade, I want to place a trade, I want to do this, you're chasing it, and it's gonna run away from you. So now you're gonna go to the chart and your eyes are gonna pick out setups that are not even valid because you want to place a trade. It's like how many times, yeah. <laughs> it's like no, i ain't gonna use that example but i want you guys to, to make sure that when you're going to the charts you're setting the right intentions so you have to self-audit and, uh, and make sure okay when i'm going to the charts why am i even doing this you have to be intentional so when i say intentional what will i do i don't think you need one of those pre-market routines but just take 30 seconds, a minute, just to check in with yourself and reconnect and connect with yourself. Because a lot of times we're on autopilot, you know, we have like around 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day, all right? 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts we think every single day. Most of our life is on autopilot. And what will happen and what creates that autopilot is obviously your belief system, your subconscious mind. But what I'm trying to say is this, unless you're breaking out of that by being conscious, how can you get conscious and set your intention? Just breathe, like consciously breathe, do deep diaphragmic breath work, nice slow breaths, calm yourself down and ask yourself, well, what am I doing today? Why am I going to this chart? And when I, and, I, and these are questions I'm going to ask myself, like I talk to myself, you know, like, I'm at, like, you know, imagine one of your friends is going through a relationship problem, right? How easy is it to give them relationship advice? It's easy, right? <laughs> what about when you're having relationship problems? It's hard to give yourself advice or well, it feels hard, but imagine you're talking to someone else. Like I literally have conversations with myself. Like I'll literally sit there and talk to myself. So do the same thing. Okay. Hi, Kieran. What am I doing today? Why am I going to the charts? Am I going to the charts because I want to place a trade? Or am I going to or am I going to the charts to see if my trading plan is presenting itself? Two different paradigms, man. You know, when I was, you know, going back to 2017, 2018, right? When I wasn't profitable and I was blowing, you know, accounts left, right, and center. It was because of my mindset, right? Obviously, there's an element of technical analysis, which is important, which obviously we're going through, but it was the approach I had, right? Every single strategy in the world works. It's the person that uses it. Because again, if you're going to the charts with that mindset of, I want to place a trade today, like a crack addict, you're, you're fiending for it. You're literally going to force in your eyes, right? Your brain is going to represent the data you see on the chart to make it fit your bias. It's called confirmation bias. Google that, confirmation bias research confirmation bias it's basically you have something called a reticular activating system your selective focus and what that means is it's like okay wherever you are right now just look around like physically in your room or office whatever right look for the color red look for the color red your eyes are going to start seeing red things everywhere red things because your selective focus is picking out those things based on what you programmed it so what intentions are you setting before you go to the chart right warm up before you trade right? Go back test before you trade. Go watch some, go review some of your case studies. Go do your end of day markups. Re warm up before you get to the markets. Don't just wake up London session. Oh, I want to place a trade today. Come on, bro. You're better than that. Warm up, prepare yourself. You know, if you're going into the gym, you're just going to lift hundred kg or you're going to start smaller, warm up, warm your muscles up. Same thing. So again, the mindset is key because if you're going to that, if you're going to the chart now, 
right? You have that bias. Oh, I want to place a trade. I need to place a trade. You're now going to start seeing things that are not even there. You're going to start looking for trades that are not even valid. But anyway, back to the technicals. So can you see how poor this reaction is in, in phase A, right? Look at this price is just trudging along. We don't want to be seeing that. We want to be seeing price come in, right? Nice reaction. Seller climax, all that reaction, phase A, because they're filling their first buy orders. From there, what do you want to see? Price come down, right? And form your trading range. Now, if you're on like a one minute time frame, three minute time frame, five minute, like there's no rush, right? Back test how long schematics take to form two. On average, a minute, three minute schematic is going to take you three hours, four hours to build. Maybe sometimes if you're on a five minute, maybe 24 hours. So there's no rush. Like even a seconds time frame schematic, that will take on average 20 minutes, 30 minutes. One sec. Let's see this come up. 20, 30 minutes. So there's no rush. Now, again, can you see, guys, how poor these reactions are? So now, again, if you come in with that mindset of, I want to place a trade, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's my selling climax. That's my automatic reaction. So that's ready at first flag. We know, the P we know obviously the POI is terrible, so we shouldn't even be on a lower time frame here. And that's that's probably the easiest way, to be honest, like the higher time frames, man. Like, it doesn't matter about getting super good at lower time frames. It's all about the POI. Where are you? Because you could be the best lower time frame entry by, but if your POIs are off, it, you know what I mean? It's not going to work. Now, obviously, not every trade is going to hit take profit. You know, yes, everyone still loses. It's part of the game. But it's about how many losses can you prevent? You know, because don't forget, when you take a trade, you have to pay, you have to pay spreads, you have to pay commissions, and if you're holding it overnight, you can't pay swap fees. And more importantly, right, you got to spend time to journal that trade. You got to spend time to go and do all that stuff. So it's like, how can I stop myself from taking these trades? That's the key. How can I invalidate these trades? So again, right, even if you did, if the, even if this was a big reaction, and a, it's not even a POI anyway, so we can't even be doing this. But a lot of people, or a few people, to be honest with you, were actually trying to take bias from here. But we, there's no POI. So we, should, we shouldn't even be on the lower time frames here. Furthermore, look how poor the reactions are. And finally, even if it was a good POI, even if there was good reactions, we're still in phase B. The schematic's not even completed, right? This is back to the retail thinking. Just because you see price do that, <laughs> it doesn't mean the schematic is complete. You have to validate it, right? That's our retail traders trade, remember? Lower high, lower low, break, and they you know buy off the order block and then get slapped, right? Why is it not valid? Well, look, of everything we just said, but there's only one, two, oh, these are not even drives, but one, two, three drives. We need a manipulation at the very least. So this is not even a valid schematic to begin with. And the POI is off. So we're not even looking to be taking buys there. Now, let's compare that to the one I actually took an entry on. Right, price comes in. We're seeing nice reactions, nice reactions, nice reactions, nice reactions. Multiple orders being filled, right? Multiple orders being filled, right? Price comes in, nice spring, nice break. Clear the trading range. From there, all I did, I literally just measured out. There we. Now again. When we do have valid trades, not every valid trade will hit take profit. I want you to understand that. Like, if I'm taking trades, yes, some trades will hit stop loss straight away. It's part of it. But the key is, is that stop loss a justified loss? Because remember, you have to reprogram your mind and change what you deem is a good trade. A good trade is not a take profit. A good trade is a trade you manage risk and follow your rules. And when I was new, I didn't understand that. When I was new, I thought, oh, bro. I have to hit take profit, otherwise it's a bad trade. But here's the thing. It doesn't take any skill to have a winning trade. You know, we can literally, like, go on a, a, an account right now, drop 100 lots on Euro USD, and just gamble and press buy or sell by pure luck, shoots up 50 pips and we make 10K. Anyone can do that once. But can you do that consistently for weeks, months, and years? How you do that is by making sure you have the same approach. Right? If you've got the same approach and you're consistent with your input, you're going to get a consistent output. So even though you are, even trades like this, for example, you know what, what happens, you know, we come down, all right, fills us off the 80. Uh, obviously the 51 did hit stop loss, but it's part of it, all right? Comes in, all right, off the 80. Bro, coming up here already at one, well, well, the actual trade I got filled on was like a one to eight point something, uh, roughly here. 
right? News comes in, NFP, partially out. It's a quiet week. It's the only trade I took last week. Close 30% of the trade. And again, I'm not getting greedy. I'm not thinking, oh, right, is the market going to go to a one-to-one -one million and I'm going to make no. Take what the market's giving you, right? Because look at what we come into. Devil's advocate position. Redistro. 80% of it. Now, I would have looked for hedges in here. Um, but to be honest with you, I was actually out. So that's why I wasn't really looking at them. But um, let's see if she even presents a hedge in there. It doesn't look like it. No. But yeah, this trade here, even though it goes to, you know, a one to eight, we close 30% and it comes and takes us out. This is a good trade. I would take this trade 100 days in a row, 100 times in a row. And I know that my odds and my edge is going to play out. And again, this is why psychology comes in, man, because what can happen is we can take trades like, for example, if you're taking trades like this off this buy, bro, these trades are not going to work out. Now, what will happen is, let's say you do hit a take profit once off like this shitty redistro over here, and you obviously was perceiving it as accumulation and you obviously hit stop loss, or sorry, let's say you hit take profit off that, you're now going to condition your mind to say that it's good to break your rules and take trades that don't follow your plan and follow your criteria. So now you're conditioning yourself to trade against your plan. So yeah, you may hit take profit once, but what's going to happen over the next few weeks, the next few months? That's why so many traders, when they start off, they'll go for a period of luck where you know they'll, they'll make money for a day, a week or whatever, or even on the funded accounts and they'll pass it and they can't keep it because their approach is different. And that's why we have these validation criterias. And as you journal your trades and you learn your system and you learn and you get better, you'll be able to start to invalidate trades as well and look at your journal. So we'll do some actual live analysis in a minute, um, but I'll give you guys an opportunity to do Q and A's. But yeah, like this, this trade here, you know, was I upset? Was I cheesed that, you know, I come back and I see that price ends up taking me out? No, because I made money on this trade. But more importantly, that's not the reason I'm happy with the trade. The reason I'm happy with the trade because it met my plan and met my criteria, right? Let's say, for example, price just goes bang, here's my stop loss straight away. Am I going to get upset and go smash my laptop? No, oh, I'm going to say to my, when I was new, I'll get upset. I'll get upset because of my belief system about being right and wrong. But I'm not going to go too in depth into that today. It's too much for today. But did you, like, when you take a trade, did you follow your rules and follow your plan? You're not thinking about trading on a trade by trade basis. You're doing sample sizes, 20 trades at a time, right? You follow the same criteria for 20 trades. Once you get to those 20 trades, you can now start looking, tweaking your system and changing one thing at a time. Um, but yeah, this was the buy, obviously, we caught on Friday. Um, but that was it. That was literally the only trade I took last week. It was pretty dead. Um, and like, it's honestly, it's part of it, guys. Like some weeks, there's going to be zero opportunities. And in some weeks, there's going to be so many opportunities, you can't catch them all. It's just the nature of the game. And it's realizing that we can't control the outcome. And this is the big difference. In life, we get our success from controlling outcome. For example, you're dating, right? You have to, or you're fighting, right? You have to control the outcome. It's based on you doing something and getting the reward. But in trading, bro, you can do everything right and still lose. And that's the thing that fucks people's heads up because they can do everything right and still lose because they're thinking short term. You have to elevate your perspective and think, I don't care about one trade. I'm thinking about 20 trades, 50 trades, 100 trades, 1,000 trades, 10,000 trades in a row. You see what I'm saying? You have to elevate your perspective. So yeah, this yeah for me, this was a textbook trade. Like it's absolutely fine. Um, even though, and again, this is the nature of the beast, man. Um, you know, I can show you a hundred trades I took like this. Some of them hit stop loss. Some of them end up going, you know, you take partials, you end up getting taken out at reduced risk. Um, and some of them go to those one to 100s, you know, it's, it's part of the game. Um, it's just learning like, you know, when you're taking partials as well, you have to like think, think of, like, so for example, why did I close 30% of this trade and not close 50%? Why did I close 30 and not close 10? Why did I not close 25? Well, firstly, that's the only trade I took last week. It's Friday, end of the week, news is out, right? I'm up a one to eight. I'm at a devil's advocate position, right? That was the only trade I took that week. Why not close 30%? You see what I'm saying? Now you might get greedy and think, oh, well, normally what I'll do, like if like as a base rule, I'll close minimum 25%. So four orders, target one, devil's advocate one, devil's advocate two, the high, and then the extension, 
right? 25%, 25%, 25%. If, for example, uh, it wasn't an active trading week, and let's say I haven't taken any trades, I may close 30%. Shit, I might close 50%. Let's say I'm down, okay, let's, well, when would I close 50% of my first devil's advocate? Let's say I'm down for the trading week. Let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, I lost a few trades and I'm down like half a percent, just for example. And then um, let's say now it's Thursday or Friday, we catch a trade and we're up 1% on the account. But I'm closing half percent. I'm putting my account back where I started. Um, so yeah. Um, so any guy that guys, so do you have any questions about invalidating that buy on Euro USD? Let me know. Um if not, we can look at some like more trades to analyze it. Um if you guys do you have any questions, you're more than welcome to unmute and ask i think this should be able to unmute yeah not really a question but yeah the whole thing about the poi so facts i took a l a couple days ago or maybe last week and i reviewed it i was like yo what the hell there's no poi here mm. and i took a l the other day and it was so valid and i didn't even feel like bad i was like yo that all my trading plan like what could i do you know yeah but it, it didn't feel bad because i was like yo i didn't break my rule it yeah. just you know didn't really know. that's it and like at first, you know, when you're like new to that, it can be emotional. It can be upset and losing the trade. But like you said, you've got to change your focus, focus on the fact that on your performance. Um, what's, that? what's this? Can you explain what devil's advocate is? Yeah. So devil's advocate. Uh, I'll give you an example in real life. Then I'm going to translate it to the to the charts. Um, will you post the link? Yeah, yeah. Just um, DM me for the link. Or I'll just send it in the chat. Um, so yeah, so devil's advocate. Right. Let's say me and you are talking. We're, have a, we're, we're, we're having a discussion. If I'm using a devil's advocate, I'm entertaining an opposite, an op can't English. I'm entertaining the opposing idea. Okay. So let's say, for example, when we're trading, when you're, when you're, like we said, confirmation bias, right? Reticular activating system, what you look for, you always find, even if it's not truly valid. So here's the thing when we're taking buys, or our buys are only looking for more buys. So we're completely ignoring where the sellers live. And all the market does is go from zone to zone because it's only trying to manipulate or mitigate. That's all it's doing, manipulate and mitigate. It only does two things. So you can destroy, rebalance itself. So a devil's advocate is when I'm in a buy, where, it, where do the sellers live, right? If I'm in an accumulation, where's the devil's advocate look? So look, let's say we go over here, right? Um, for example, when we took these buys back here, when we took these buys back here, all right? Of these micros, when we come into the 80 of the reaccumulation to the left, right? I'm taking partials in these devil's advocate areas. Why? Because this is supply. Now, when I'm using devil's advocates, I don't care so much to actually validate it for a devil's advocate. Um, it's just when I want to take an entry because I'd rather be more aggressive in taking profits than aggressive in taking entries. So a devil's advocate is if you're taking a buy, where do the sellers live? If you're taking a sell, where do the buyers live? So, for example, um, when we took this buy here, right, where did the opposition live? Where did the sellers live? Here. It's the redistrict. So I don't, I don't give a fuck about this high. I don't give a fuck about the weekly highs. I don't care. Where is the opposition right now? Where's the opposition? If you're, if you're, in, okay, let's say you're walking around London, right, and you know there's, a, there's, there's one area, in, one road in London where everyone gets robbed and stabbed, right? If you know... The chances of these of these areas getting robbed and stabbed, you got to be very cautious or even just avoid it. So when I'm trading, I'm looking at where are the devil's advocates, and you do this before you even take the entry, because remember when you take entries, your brain starts releasing dopamine, starts releasing happy chemicals, and your emotions change and cloud your judgment and change the way you perceive the markets, and you will completely ignore where the sellers live. You'll be thinking, oh my god, price is going to go to one to one million, I'm going to make a million dollars. Right. But look at your devil's advocates, where are your sellers. So if I'm taking a buy, my eyes are looking for where do the sellers live? You know, like, let's say, for example, and this is also how you can invalidate trades, too. If this comes up here, right, and comes into this redistro and comes back to take my entry, I ain't taking that entry. I'm taking my limit order off. Oh, but Kieran, what if it fills me and does that? OK. I'd rather I would do that 100 times in a row because majority of the time it'll probably lose. Okay, if I miss the entry, okay, cool. I'll just play a reaccumulation, continuation. Let it distribute, boom, come down, bang. So what, uh, another way to invalidate trades too is using these devil's advocates to see 
is price distributed in this area before coming back to fill you on your buy? So you see here, we just exit the trading range, no problem, right? There's no there's no supply we're interacting. Supply is in this area, right? We've got imbalance, there's still reason for price to come higher. So if you were looking for a buy out of here, for example, well, there's no reaccumulation there either. Um, and we actually failed to break this high. Now, if this would have broke this high, okay, that's a different story. Come in, they hop on a micro, bang, on the second, take an entry, send it higher. So um, you can use devil's advocates to invalidate trades and for targets and to take your profits. And normally what I'll be doing when I'm taking a trade, I'll have it between three to four targets, depending on what price is actually showing. Um, and I'll just pay myself at each, each devil's advocate. Minimum 25%. So um, yeah, so when we come in here, minimum 25%. I, like I said, I closed 30% um, because I didn't really take any average. Well, I didn't take any trades last week. And, you know, these months are very low volume. Um, But yeah. So I hope that makes sense on how to invalidate that and what a devil's advocate is. I'll show you one more example for devil's advocates. And then uh, we could do a few more questions. So where's another one? Let me show you. So let's say for devil's advocate. So let's do like this counter trends short, or, or even these. But like, there's so there's so many examples we can use. Um, okay. So let's say here, for example, we was taking this short in here, right? Where are my devil's advocates? All right? Where did the buyers live? Let's go down a lower time frame. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Let's go replay it. Where is it? Oh man, I missed my computer. Where are we? Oh. Where's my first devil's Africa? For me. Now, so again, for devil's advocates, I don't care so much about actually validating them um, because I'm not really looking to take the buy out of it. But this little micro, micro, micro on the second is a reaccumulation. I don't think trading view will let me go back to this one. But when this is my first devil's advocate. And when price comes into here, pay myself 25%. All right. Now, obviously, like, I don't like I, when I'm paying myself partials. I don't really care too much about what the risk reward is at because we're only looking for minimum one to tens anyway. I just want to get my profit, get in um, and bank it. So when price comes into here, right, there's a few ways you can actually use your devil's advocate. So if you're quite busy um, and you know you're not going to be on the charts, you can just enter four trades. So if you're risking $100, let's say, you $25, $25, $25 across four orders. Same entry. Same uh, stop loss, but you just set a hard take profit in these areas, right? So as soon as price comes in, one, your orders is closed out, bang, you partialed out. Because all the market is going to do is go from zone to zone, supply to demand, supply to demand. All right, it's just going to go from zone to zone. So when price comes in this area, right, I'm taking 25% of the trade off the table. No questions asked. I'm not thinking, oh, is it going to go? No, no. 25% closed. Now, right, what will happen is if you're unexperienced, not using these devil's advocates, you're like, you're looking at your MetaTrader 4, you're seeing, you know, 3K, 4K, 5K, 10K profit. You're like, oh my God, you're thinking about, I want to be a millionaire. You're thinking about the Lambo you're going to buy. You're thinking about the clothes you're going to buy. You're getting so excited. Your eyes are off the prize, right? You've got to remember that trading is a game of defense, right? I'm always, I'm not on offense when I trade. I'm on defense. I'm trying to protect and, and look after my capital. So I care about where the opposition lie, you know? You know what I mean? Like you think, like let's say for example, um, you have to be aware where the opposition lie. Like you think I'm going to walk around certain areas of London or even certain areas of Bangkok with a diamond watch? No, right? Because I, I got to be aware where the opposition lie. I got to be aware of the enemy. You know, if you're in Afghanistan or some shit, right, and you know there's a bunch of terrorists around the corner, bruv, you're going to be very careful that terrorists could be there, right? You got to be a bit more mindful. You're not going to run through and start screaming. No, you're going to sneak around and. You know what I mean? So yeah, always look for your devil's advocates, guys. Uh, and remember, you can use your devil's advocates for two things, for take profits and for invalidating trades. So for example, um, well, the Euro USD, we showed the, the other one. But yeah, from there, right, where's my next devil's advocate? Here. 
because reaccumulation. Um, set my alert and building confluence. What is it? This area I've got liquidity imbalance is more reason for price to come lower. But again, right, I'm not going to hold my breath and say, oh my God, I'm going to keep the whole volume. No, I'm going to keep paying myself. So once price comes down to here, all right, ready at one to 38, what do we do? Pay ourselves another 25%. Another 25%. From there, what was my next devil's advocate? I just used the imbalance fill. So 50% is closed off when price comes and touches this area. From there, next devil's advocate was the 50. All right, at number one to 53. Paid ourselves another 25%. And here's the great thing, right? When you start getting these bigger risk rewards as well, like the partials, you don't even have to close 25%. Like you can just close 5% of the order, 5% of the order, and just keep paying yourself and paying yourself and paying yourself because the risk reward is so good. It's like a passive income, basically. Like, look, there's these trades I'm in the entity CAD. Yeah, I've been holding these fucking out since like March, bro. Right, look at the R&Rs on these, bro. All right, bro, I did like... I think I have about maybe like 10% of the volume, maybe like I have to check MetaTrader for, maybe like 5%, 10% of the volume left, I completely forget. But where are we? But because the risk rewards are so high, it's still compounding and paying ourselves handsomely. Where were they? Um, that's back here. Where are they? We can I remember it was in March, I think. Yeah. In March. Oh, my markups have been deleted. Oh, um, oh, okay. I think they have been deleted. Oh, might be in here. Oh, what well, trading view? Why you do this to me? Um, oh, we can think this is the entry, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check MT4 on the date on this. But yeah, I'm holding like three orders, right? One's at like a one to oh, one, like a one to 120, one's like a one to 140. Um, and um, where are we? Switch the accounts. I also have like um two trading accounts too. So I have a swing trading account, which I barely trade because it's higher time frames only. And I have like day trading accounts too. Um where is it? Oh no, I haven't got this account on my phone. What is going on? Um where is it? Now, this one's logged into my laptop, so I'll do this one later. But if, if I'm not mistaken, the entry was around here. So, when you are analyzing as well, guys, and when you are doing your top downs, make sure that you're always using the higher time frames. Like, I know a few people are having conversations with, like, some people just start analysis on the five minute time frames. Like, no, you always do a top down analysis, even if you want to day trade and catch, you know like smaller trades for a few hours and get in and get out, you can still do that, but you have to be aware of the higher time frames, right? Every time you analyze a chart, you go from monthly, weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 50 minute, right? And work your way down. Um, But yeah, here was the entry of this. You know, we had, all right, let me replay it to the entry and we'll do a top-down analysis on this. Um, So, Higher time frame. Now, obviously, again, you obviously want to be doing your fundamental analysis as well and um, diving into that. Now, we understand that New Zealand dollar and Australian dollar is heavily, heavily bearish. Um, well, I think what we're going to do is we'll do a whole nother call on fundamental specifically because this is what sets the biases before looking at the chart. Um, because if we get into fundamentals now, we're going to be here for like another three hours. <laughs> I don't want to open that can of worms. But look on a higher time frame, right? Heavily, heavily bearish, you know? Big redistro to the left. Where's the pen? All right, price comes in, accumulates, distros, comes down, breaks, come back up. All right, we distribute and let's see the distro. Now, again, this is a weekly time frame. Now, all the way to the left, it's not from 1999. It's not too relevant, but I still want to be mindful of where we are. All right, look at this distro from 2014. I'm going to be holding this trade all the way down here too. But look, price comes in, sell order being filled, trading range, bang. And look at, again, look at the reactions. Nice, strong reactions. Sellers climax, all my reaction. Secondary test, minor sign of weakness, right? Another test. And then obviously we come in, create up for us. So you see the orders being filled, one drive, two drive, three drives, and then we get our break and our sign of weakness. You can also see there's a micro up in here too. 
from that, what does price do? It comes back to mitigate. There's your own. She comes up, slaps into the 50, distros out, one, two, three, manipulates, comes down, breaks, creates a new low. What is this here? Redistribution, accumulation, distribution, breaks a new low. So in a bearish market cycle. Now remember, right, this is from the weekly and daily. Right? This is data from 2014, 2015. So even though this is such a higher time frame, if I want even if I want to catch a day trade now on this, I still want to be mindful of where we are in the higher time frames to understand the bigger picture. Because even when you're day trading, right, and you've got your higher time frame POIs, if price does come into a higher time frame POI and you're a day trader and a swing trade opportunity presents itself, take it. You know, you have to be mindful of the higher time frames. Like if you're going to the charts and just looking at the one minute time frame, the three minute time frame, like you're just going to set yourself up for disaster. You have to know where the higher time frame buyers are, sellers are, so you can build your narrative and work your way down and understand the storyline. Now, granted, there'll be some times where you're on the chart and you just can't really read what's going on with the price action. And that's okay. All right. There's, there's, look, like I have right now, there are, well, where is it? On my second, you watch this Euro Chef, Usar, Euro GBP, all these pairs. Bro, I, I can't fuck it. I have no idea what, what, what they're doing. I have no fucking idea. Does that mean I'm a bad trader? No, because if I can't read it, I'm not going to trade it. If it's not clean, just change the screen. You know, like the, the, the question is always in my head. And this just comes from doing this so much journaling um, is what would my journal say? You know, you know, the Christians talk about what would Jesus do? What would your journal say? Right? What would your journal say about this trade? And if you would kick yourself for taking that trade, don't take the trade. Simple as that. So anyway, right? Let's go ahead that. We have this redistro. So bang, price comes in, measure it, we come in, tick off the 50. So as we come to the 50 now, all right, I can drop down to the relative lower time frame. And again, this, this, what we're doing here, this works on every time frame. So like this redistro here, all right, I'll just mark it up again. This redistro here could be a one minute and we could be dropping down to the seconds. It's all the same principles. So, but we have to be very mindful of where we are. You know, like if I'm on a, for example, if I'm on a five minute time frame right now and I'm not looking at the higher time frames, I might perceive this as, well, this is not nothing really bullish about this. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean? Like you could easily perceive it. Like you could be like, all right, bet you come here. Okay, look, it, potential reaccumulation, but it's obviously not a reaccumulation because we can't validate it. But you know what I mean? If you're just on a five minute and you're not having higher time frames, you're not aware that there's a fat supply zone to the left and you could be looking for a buy in here. Obviously, it's not even a valid reaccumulation anyway because there's no clean distro. We need to see something like that. Um, but you know what I mean? So you have to be aware of where you are in the higher time frames. If in doubt, zoom out. Um, so where was we? So yeah, now if we go back to the daily again for this top down, we can see price comes in, right? Now, where is our redistro as well? Build confidence. This is not a redistro, guys. Why? Because we can't validate it. Here's our redistro. Here's our reload that causes the break. Distro, redistro, bang. Confluence, she comes in. Let's see if she actually tags the 50 of this. I can't, I can't remember if she did. Look at that. Right on the money, bro. Confluence. So I'm not even looking like, so with this chart, right? I would have my alert set at these areas and I'm not even looking at the chart, bro. Like there's only two, like forget the time frame. Forget this is a daily time frame, right? This could be a five minute. There's only two things that get me into a trade. It's either like, what? let's say when price is sitting down here, I have an alert on the low and I have an alert in my, in my POI. Right, and I leave it. It goes on my back of my watch list, and I don't look at the chart. I got nothing to. I got no business looking at the chart. Because what am I going to do? I'm going to stare at that chart. My, my brain's going to play tricks on me and start showing me things that are not even there. So, yeah, um, we come in right as we come in now. We've got a valid POI. The POI is the most important thing. If you don't have a point, a good point of interest, it doesn't matter what the lower time frame schematic looks like. And this is where you just have to be patient, man. You know, like if I, if, I, if I went back to, you know, 2017 and I didn't take a trade for a week, bruv, 
I'd feel like a bum. I'd feel like I didn't do anything. But this is the crazy thing about trading. Like you have to remember that not being in a trade is actually a trade itself. No position is a position. And most of the time it's the best position. So anyway, all right, we come in right on the daily. So this could be, for example, 15 minute and I could drop down to the relative lower time frame, the five, the three and the one. Um, yeah, now let's say she didn't come all the way up. Like let's say she didn't come and tab tag the 50 and she creates a new low. Let's say she does that, right? Now I just need to validate, do we get a redistro, right? You can see a lower time frame accumulation there, but obviously I'd have to drop down a little bit, zoom in and validate it. Um, and then obviously if that alert did break, I'd then just play the mitigation of that. Um, and that's it. Like there's only two things that get you into a trade, right? So either you come back to mitigate or you just come and create another redistro and you just play that because your line in the sand now shifts of order flow. Now, obviously, if this breaks, then you zoom out, all right? Because it may be a, a higher time frame leg that you're retracing. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we drop down. Now we can go to the four hour, the one hour, or the 15 to zoom in, all right? So this is as we tag into that 50, right? Like that high, I'll put a line on it. Um, and obviously we have, up here cool uh, uh, uh. so i'm just going to delete this one just because i don't want it to be in my way so now what i'm looking for now is our orders being filled all right this is the key so remember how we validate a trade so number one right where are we if you can't answer these questions you're not you shouldn't be trading where are we guys you tell me in the chat where are we where are we because this, the answer to this question is why I go to a lower time frame, right? If I if I have no POI, I have no business in a lower time frame. So where are we? We're in a POI. Specifically, what's the POI? It's a redistribution, a valid redistribution, and we trade into the fifty percent of it. So we're at premium price, right? I'm not going to be looking. Zoom out. I'm not going to be looking for sales down here or in these areas. I mean, to be fair, you know, in here we could take a look. A uh, little bit low probability though, because obviously you've got all this liquidity here. And look, higher time frame. We're in discount, right? You want to be selling high. So what what like how do you determine what's discount? So when you have your manipulation, basically like up this 50 is premium price. Anywhere in here. You just, these are the areas you want to be selling from. Now let's say you're down here, right? The market wants to do two things. Seek and destroy, rebalance itself. We've just sought and destroyed and created a new look. It's going to rebalance itself. It's going to rebalance itself by creating a lower time frame accumulation. Now that lower time frame accumulation is either going to be an accumulation to bring us up to mitigate the supply, or it's just going to be so many sellers are in control, it just redistributes and does that. That's why I set those alerts. So I have an alert here and then have an alert here. Now, again, forget that this, you know, this is from 2019 price action, 2022, 2023. Like the time frames are relevant. This is the same thing on the five minute time frame. It's the same principles. Nothing changes. Um, so because I've got this POI, that's the only reason I'm going to this lower time frame. Like if there's no POI, I'm not. So from there, now price comes in. I know I'm in the area sellers live. So I know right, I'm in my POI. Actually, let me do it like this. So, number one, where are we? We're at our point of interest. Number two, uh, now, like, the order of these is like phase A, phase B, phase C, right? So phase A, what happens in phase A? It's their first order being filled. It's the member of the hot plate, right? If this is hot and I'm going to touch it, I'm going to move away fast. You're going to see reactions. You know, I'm going to be chilling around and moving slow. You know what I mean? So number one, where are we? Are we seeing phase A of a schematic present itself? Phase A is what? The first order is being filled. So we know we're in phase A. We validate phase A. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> we validate phase A by seeing the market give us our change of character and form our trading reach. Right? So we're in. Where's the house gone? I can't believe all my markups went. It's crazy. Where we go? So here we go, right? 
So we start seeing our first cell orders coming in and changing character. Look at the size of the retracements. So for example, right? If we're seeing, you know, like the market over here, like we're barely retracing to the 50%, all right? You know, from here, we're seeing the market, you know, again, barely come to the 50%. Now, and this is just typical, like using the high highs, higher low stuff to identify the change of character because you're looking for the sell order coming in. Now, look, we actually break the low. We actually sweep the low. So a lot of people now are going to be like, oh, now remember, I wouldn't have the 50, all right? 50 is up here, all right? And remember the sell orders, right? So th these lines I'm drawing is like more sell orders, more people waiting to sell, right? So as you're going to get higher, this is why you have like, this is why the UTAD on a distro is literally the high before it breaks because that's their final sell order being filled. So we have our change of character, right? Because we're getting a bigger retracement than all the other prior retracements, right? We get, we go over the 100%, we actually break the low. These are the best change of characters you can get when price is doing this and does that. They're the best in my opinion because now what's everyone doing, right? The weak hands are like, oh, all the block and then it's getting absolutely raped. So these like would allow the trading range to fall. Now, obviously, there's like, you know, you can get two trading ranges. You can get price giving you um, kind of like a sideways market. And then you can get like an ascending wedge like this. The difference of trading them, um, obviously, this goes back to different types of schematics. Um, the validation criteria is all the same. It's just that, um, sorry, someone's calling me and put my phone on, do not disturb. Um, the, the, the validation cr criteria is all the same. It's just, um, Oh, I lost my train of thought now. Yeah, sorry, that was it. On the ascending wedges, like this, what we have here, right? Oh, it's a pretty shit training range. Um, here we go. Oh, it's, okay, you get you get the point. We need a major sign of weakness on this. I'm not trading that. I don't care about this. No, uh, I, because we still have potential demand in these areas. So I need price to break this low and give me a major sign of weakness. Remember the hot plate, right? Look at that. We touched the fifty. The reload, we're moving fast. Price ain't fucking around. All right? From there, what can we do? From there, well, so let's continue validating the schematic. Number one, where are we? So we've got the POI. Number two, we've got the trading range. So this is phase A, right? Trading range and the change of character. Now, number three, are we seeing orders being filled in this schematic? So this is where phase B comes in, right? So what's the purpose of phase B? orders being filled right phase b is building the cause right they're building the cause they have to cause and effect right they can't just you know you can't just go to the gym one day and expect to have a nice body you got to go there every single day you know what i mean so cause and effect we want to see orders being filled that's why like here this little break the reason it doesn't go lower and lower and it does that is because there's no orders being filled where do they fill orders they filled what one order it's not going to send the market lower. The only way the market will move lower if there's more sell orders than buy orders, right? Very simple. So how do we validate orders being filled? So obviously we need sell orders to come to the least a 50% of the trading range. It's the same thing if you have um, ascending wedge. It's just the 50 is like, for example, this is not a sell order being filled. No, this is a sell order being filled. This is a sell order being filled. This is a sell order being filled. Why? Because the reactions, we're seeing substantial reactions, right? That come to at least 50% of the trading range. From there, oops, I'll be back, all right? What well, orders are being filled? We have those free drives. What some people are doing um, is like some people seeing schematics, like whether it's, you know, even if it's like the ascending wedge or the um, sideways market, what some people are doing is they're seeing the free drives and like it sweeps the high, but they're perceiving that as a manipulation. You need the free drives first, then those free drives that are formed, price needs to manipulate those free drives. So we've seen our drives, one, two, three. Now I need a manipulation, right? Bang, look at that, big manipulation. So now this is now moving into phase C, our manipulation. So what we're doing is with the, the, these principles, how you validate each phase, how you validate phase A, phase B, phase C. We only take schematics in phase D after the sign of weakness, All right? So now number five, Right? Do we get our break slash sign of weakness? This is now moving again, different phases. Moving into phase D, when, because what happens from phase C to phase D? When we have that UTAD, 
the up for the manipulation, this is when their final order is being filled. Like, bro, they're not look, they're not manipulating to take out John with his 0 0.01 lot size. Sorry if John's on the call. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, they don't care about fucking Bob or, or his $2 trading account. Bro, like, what they're doing is they're filling orders. They're literally filling orders. That's the whole reason why they sweep high is to fill sell orders. Because as you go higher, there's more orders that are available. So they fill that order. Now, if that order is being filled, and it's true, we want to see the major sign of weakness. We get that. Now, obviously, this is a ascending wedge, so price needs to exit the trading range. Um, so yeah, from there, um, let's see where we move on to. Let's zoom out a little bit. Obviously, there's like, now again, there's two scenarios what you do, right? Once you have your distro and your schematic, if it's valid and the risk reward's good, you can go ahead and set your limit orders. Um, again, I didn't because it's still on an hourly time frame. So like, you can measure the whole schematic if you want to. You can see we come up to the 50, but for me, I'm not, you know, taking a trade with a 80, 88 pip stop loss. You know, add spread on NCAD, 90 pip stop loss. I'm not, I'm not taking that. So um, yeah, so there's, there's only two scenarios after that point. It's, are we going to come back, give our entry? Again, we can go to a lower time frame if we want to. Um, or are we going to come down and create a redistro? So it's trap and price, alert, alert, set the alerts, walk away. You have no business being in the market in, the, in here. If you're getting stopped out a lot, it's because you're trading in the middle, right? You've got to trade from the edges, right? Don't diddle in the middle. What do I mean? So for example, here is the middle. It's diddling in the middle, right? This is an, an accumulation for price to now send its way back up here. If she doesn't come and mitigate the 50 or the 80, we need that distro, bang, and then we can just play that. All right, clear schematics. Now, from here, um, I can't remember what happened in here because this is a while ago, to be honest with you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there was a lower time frame entry that presented itself. Um, but I remember, obviously, we didn't have this redistro in here. From there, same thing. We're just playing the order flow now because we're distributing and we're in a bearish market cycle, obviously from our supply. From there, all right, we can see price comes back up to mitigate off the 50%. And again, we're setting up for another redistribution. All right. So from there, as price comes into the 50, oops, and you can just see like so many orders these guys are trying to fill. They're just trying to fill orders, trying to fill orders, trying to fill orders. It's getting slammed down. All the work that the buyers are putting in is getting smacked down. It's like whack-a-mole, right? Bang. Got our orders, manipulation, more important. Now, if there wasn't this POI to the left, I'm not on the lower time frame in here. I'm only on this, because again, where I am, there's a POI here, right? If this is a redistro, I need to have the low broken to play the mitigation if there's no POI to the left, right? If there is a POI to the left, yeah, we just drop down to the lower time frame. So again, we're on the hourly, so we can drop down to like the 15 and the four, realistically the five. Um, but I just like to cycle through the time frames and see. Now, even though we had that big distro to the left, I showed you guys, we got orders being filled, right? We're just seeing sellers, sellers, sellers. There's micro distros in here. They're just filling sell orders. Price comes up. Another micro distro off to 50, comes down, breaks order flow. All right. More importantly, obviously, I showed you guys the orders on the higher time frame too. Drive, 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 drive. Um, yeah. So from there, we mitigated, we distributed. Now, for me, again, the risk reward wasn't really worth it off this 80 because the stop loss was still like almost 40 pips so i'm not taking a trade of 40 pips stop loss so drop down the five the three and the one and just look at look at the beauty again all right how do you know sellers are being filled you're seeing price creating these distros Oops. price creating these distros it's micro distros going on micro distros now um even though like this distro here you know doesn't have all the free drives what does it have it has cause and effect what did it do broke a low. The only time I'll consider a schematic that doesn't meet all the criteria is if it has cause and effect and invalidates a piece of demand. But again, I still need when price to comes up to give me the lower time frame validation in here. So again, we now, again, we're think about it, right? We've mitigated off a massive higher time frame redistro, 
right? We then dropped down to a lower time frame. We then saw price distribute. We then saw price redistribute, right? And now we're playing the mitigation of the redistro. And now inside that redistro, there's another distro inside of there. So we're just seeing sellers, 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 and sellers. Now, as price comes here to the 80, let's drop down to the M1. Look how sexy this is. Let's box this out. Let's validate it. So, number one, where are we, guys? Supply, POI to the left. Number two, right? Do we have our trading range? That's change of character. Yes. All right, look at the reactions. All right, look at our reactions. Oops. All right, price comes in, and there's our trading range. Nice, strong sell orders. More importantly, look what it's doing as well in the lower time frames. Like, can you just see how they're just distributing, distributing, smacking price down? There's so many sell orders being filled here. So again, let's go through the criteria. So at POI, we have our trading range and our change of character. Phase A. So obviously when you're live, right, the reason we have those criteria is now all those because you have to wait for the whole schematic to, you know, to build out. So price comes in, buys climax, automatic reaction, secondary test. You don't always need that sign of weakness after secondary test. Um, but again, we're just seeing our orders. Phase A, right? After phase A, right, are we seeing orders being filled? Well, yeah, we've got one, one drive, two drive, three drives. There's also another drive in here. We've actually got four drives. But again, look what I like about this. Can you see how we're just micro distributing in here too? Orders are being filled. Orders are being filled. Right? Sellers are just coming in and just showing us bearish intent. And then literally, um, again, oh, where are we? Sorry, I don't know where all my markups have gone. All right, cool. Yeah, anyway, so we have that for our validation. So we validated phase B. One, two, three. Now what do we need? Manipulation. Utad. So now if this is a manipulation, all right, what do we need to break? Here, do we break this low? Let's see. I don't think we do. Mm, no, we don't break. See how we don't break this low? I'm not taking that entry in there. Even though it works out on this example, I ain't taking that low. Because it didn't take the low, failed to break. Because again, once you have that, so again, if we go back through the criteria, right? number one, where are we? We're in an area where sellers live. Number two, we're seeing the trading range, we're seeing the first orders being filled. Number three, we're seeing a confirmation that those orders are being filled because we're entering phase B, we're shaking out weak hands, we're filling orders, and we're seeing our free drives. Number four, we're seeing that manipulation to fill that final order. And then obviously we know the final order has been filled by seeing that sign of weakness. And then the only other thing there is from there is just time of day. Like when is this happening? Um, this chart here is the UK times. Um, so Asia session finished here. I, again, I don't want my indicators not loading on here. Um, so we sweep the Asia high. And again, just because price sweeps Asia highs or lows doesn't mean you're taking a buy or a sell out of that. Like, it's all about what happens before, right? Our orders being filled. So, um, yeah, from there, my alert set here. I, mean, I didn't even see any of this because, well, my alert's not triggered. And then from there, right, we get our break. So in terms of now entries, we fib her up. She comes in, we're up to the 50. We've also got a reload here. We can build confidence too. Um, but yeah, I had my limit order here. It's 50. Stop loss. And then we go. Right. And look, we don't trade in plenty of demand. If anything, the minor devil's advocate demand is here. So if we were to come in here and done that and done that, oh, I'm not taking that trade. So we want immediate mitigations or breaks. So if it's if she started coming down here, well, I would need to break this area at that point, then play the mitigation. Um, yeah, and then there was also another entry. Where was it? I think it, the next entry we took was when she um, 
I think she did redistrict in a minute, but next devil's advocate. This little area. Now, again, like I said, for devil's advocates, I don't necessarily care about like validating the devil's advocates because I'm not necessarily looking for a buy. Um, I'm looking to take my profits. So as she comes in, I'm down to the 50. At this point, you know, looking like a one to six. Nothing too bad. Now, when you look inside here as well, like look inside this redistro. Can you also see that we have imbalance inside of this too? Right? There's reason for price to come and fill this empty space. Like the reason why, for example, here we don't come up to the 80 is because there's no imbalance. All right. We fill mitigate out the imbalance before um going lower. So even now to the 8%, we're now looking at a one to nine point five. Now, from there, that's the first target. All right, next target is then going to be this low over here. All right, a one to twenty-seven. From there, I'm zooming out. All right, I'm looking for my redistro. Now, when she does come, like let's say down here, I'll be mindful, right? Because it's still a devil's advocate. I'll be looking to see if there's accumulations. And again, the beauty of these R and Rs is you don't always have to take twenty-five percent. Right, you can maybe take ten percent. And just keep paying yourself and paying yourself and paying yourself, especially when you're swing trading. Um, but yeah, from there, oops, let me know. From there, we zoom out. We're now going for these lows, and more importantly, eventually, these lows. And I'll be looking and being mindful of this last little sell to buy that was advocate around the 50, just to see if price does accumulate down there. Um, and then from there, I think she does give some more re entries as well of this redistro. Price got so our lower time frame with Q. We've got a nice micro distro in there. And then, oh, wait, wait, no, no. This is, yeah. oh, no, no, let's go to the seconds. Typical. But, um, yeah, from there, that was one of the orders. Where are we? It was up here. Where was we? It was up here. So since March, prices absolutely melted off this. And again, like these principles we're using, guys, is literally the exact same thing on the five minute, the one minute, like just even though this is a trade I've been in since March, doesn't make like the way you manage it or the way that you um, take it, like that doesn't change. Just the price action is all the same. The only difference is just are you, are you waiting longer or not? Um, oh. <clears throat> Bring that down here to these lows, one to 50. And there was another, like, I ended up having three orders. I'm still in three orders of these. Um, let's have to find them. This is definitely the first one. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the second ones was the mitigation of this manipulation. Um, I think we ended up getting filled of this one yeah so i remember this one so actually what happened the reason i'm in free orders is my broker ended up filling me on the 50 and the 80 and actually kept me in both positions um oh we that that's a whole other can of worms with brokers man um make sure you with a book brokers 90 percent of these prop funds and 90 percent of these brokers out there they're b book meaning the demo accounts they manipulate the spreads they manipulate the slippage um and it's just it can be really fucked up. So making sure you're on A book brokers. Um, most brokers eventually, like they will put you on A book when you have your track record and you are trading consistently. Um, it's just like yeah, most IC markets is a good A book broker. I like IC markets. Um, but yeah, was this on a prop firm or your live account? Your no, my, my, yeah, my account. Yeah. Um, sure. All prop funds, to be honest with you, are like. B book anyway um they only put you onto a book like after you start getting some payouts um i know this because i literally had a conversation with a prop fund owner and he just told me it um so yeah that's what they do like they make all their money literally off people failing the challenges and then like you get paid out don't get me wrong like i, I could show you guys loads of payouts it's just that the payout from the fund comes from everyone else failing the challenge
Um, that's why, like, a lot of these funds, they will get a little bit, sometimes they will. So, like, what I'm trying to say is with these funds, like, don't marry the prop fund, right? Withdraw. Anytime you're up 1% on your account, withdraw, 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 withdraw. Fund your personal account. Um, yeah. Because look, look what happened to my Forex funds. You know, they just literally shut down one of the biggest firms. Um, why? <laughs> they, kept, they ran out of money, bro. They couldn't pay their people out anymore. So they just shut down. And they use things like SEC to cover it up. Um, why do you think the SEC are in investigating them anyway? But yeah, and the other entry from there had one off to 50 and one off to 80. Uh, my broker actually filled me in two. Um, because again, the spreads weren't manipulated. Like there's so many times, bro, like, even on prop, this is why like prop funds are, are short-term solutions. You know, like your goal is to always build your own personal capital um, and obviously trade your own money with regulated brokers. A lot of these brokers and funds are obviously unregulated and they're not even like they're just easily manipulated. Um but yeah, so yeah, off the 50, off the 80, I end up getting filled. Make sure as well, when you are setting your limit orders, guys, you are using your broker's data feed. So like, let's say I've done all my analysis on TradingView, my schematic is confirmed. I'll then go on to my broker to fib up and set my sell limits or buy limits. Um, but yeah, and then the other entries of this was off the 50. And this is why, like, when you put your stop loss um, above the 80 and you offset the risk, sometimes, by the way, you don't have to offset. Sometimes, like, let's say if I'm risking, you know, 0.25%, instead of doing two orders at 0.125, sometimes I'll just cal do the maths in my head um, and, like, calculate the potential profit. So, for example, like, let's say you you found one entry off the 50, one entry off the 80, um, and let's say it's a 1 to 10 and a 1 to 15, right? It's not worth me splitting the risk. All right. However, if there's a one to 10 and a one to 30, at bet now it's worth me splitting the risk. If the if the two entries are very similar risk to rewards, I'm not taking two. I'll just do one off the 50 and I'll just use the full risk on that and stop loss above the high. Um, obviously, make sure you always encounter, you add spreads on your sell side as well. So like, for example, this is why I like IC markets because their spreads are so low. But um, like, yeah, so, like some of these some of these brokers, man, they really manipulate you. It's crazy, bro. Um, but yeah, so all, like always add your spread. So, and when you are setting your stop loss, it's not on the 80, it's above the 80 plus spread. So spread is, and how you find out your spread, um, what I like to do is I like to find my average spread. So I don't check spread on MetaTrader. Um, I'll go on, I'll literally Google, I'll go and I'll type in IC markets, um, or whatever the broker you're with. I'd recommend IC markets. Um, go in there, IC markets spread on NZD CAD live spread and then my fx book website and um, they'll give you the average spread on there so i'll say that one more time just literally so google the pair you're looking at and your broker so ends of decad ic markets live spread there'll be a my um my fx book website and it'll tell you the, the, the spread like the average spread and the average spread i'll add above my stop loss so only on sales so let's say for example it's, it's one pip right so i'm going to go above the 80 5.8 pips. Now, if it's one pip, I'm going to make it 6.8 pips. For the buy side, you don't have to do that. Um, but you do for this. And obviously, when you do the position size calculator on MetaTrader 4, that will calculate your lot size and, and factor and spread for you. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so th yeah, so here's the entries. There was one off to 50. And this is why I love ABooks brokers, because they don't do dodgy shit. Um yeah man like a lot of these brokers they don't even put your money in a, in a real account it's all demo and and like what will happen now like, i remember like there was a shift in my trading like i literally felt it i think after i was trading on ic markets on my live account for like four months and i was getting my withdrawals um like it, like there was a shift you know because they a book you meaning like uh, your entry is getting filled you know like let's say for example um and you're risking like a lot of these b book brokers what they'll do is like, like you might you might even notice it, especially on some of these funds accounts as well, where let's say your stop loss is like 1.0. Sometimes it will fill you at like 1.02 or, you know what I mean? Two, three, four, five pips above it um, because they're B-book brokers and they do dodgy shit like that. But yeah. Um, oh, one more thing as well. When you are taking your sales, obviously make and your buys, you put your entry lower, whatever the spread is. So if spreads one pip, my entry is going to be done, be lower by one pip so we get filled. And that's how we got filled because even though on trading view, she doesn't hit the 80, my broker hits the 80, but then it's not about does it hit the 80 for a limit order to get filled, it's got to go through the 80. 
So that's why you put it with the spread below, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, tell me. Um, but like, let's say it's one pip, entry one pip below, and uh, stop loss one pip bigger. Um, and then, yeah, this is all she wrote, man. And then from there, trade management, well, I had my alert set on these lows so I could go reduce risk. Mm, so just waiting, 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 waiting. Uh, speeds up a little bit. So here we go. So she breaks the low. So at that point, um, I obviously move my stop losses. So, well, one, yeah. So stop loss goes, obviously this one, the first entry, once she broke this low, stop loss was reduced above this high. I've added the spread. Obviously these ones, Stop loss then got adjusted. And then what I'll do is I'll go on like, so when you go on MetaTrader on your uh, laptop and you hover your mouse over the stop loss, it will tell you in a dollar amount how much you have at risk. Now, so let's say your initial risk was $100 and now um, you reduce your risk. Let's say now it's $20, right? What I'll do is I'll pay myself that $20 out of my floating profit. So now if she does stop me out, I haven't lost anything. It's now break even. Um, and then from there, obviously, devil's advocate, partial out. And yeah, bro, these, like these orders, and this is why I love the higher time frames. Like, even though you know you can always be on the lower time frames and get your day trades, etc., which are great, but you have to be mindful of the higher time frames because, like, for example, I'm I'm not gonna be looking at this sell zone if there's no POI to the left, you know, or vice versa. I'm not gonna be just stuck on a five-minute time frame trying to buy out of certain levels. Um, when I'm in supply, you know, if I'm in a demand zone, I'm not selling. If I'm in a supply zone, I'm not buying. So that again, if I'm in a supply zone, I'm not considering any buys. If I'm in a buy zone, I'm not considering any sales until that gets invalidated. And then she comes back. Um, but yeah, man, this is why high time frames are so important because once you've got these high, and this is why I'm only looking to sell NZD cares. I'm not considering any buys because the higher time frames. You know, like we're super bearish. We're most likely going to take these lows. We're just seeing nothing but bearish order flow. So moving in now for trades. With, and again, look at the R&Rs on these things, bro. Now, even though this, this is like a bit more, like passive income doesn't exist. It's just how passive is the income. Um, This is why I like swing trading because it's very, it's pretty passive income. You can, no such thing as 100% passive income because you always got to do something. But it's more passive because you don't have to be babysitting every day. Um. Where are we? So like, you know, we're sitting at like one to one hundred and fifty, or current price one to seventy nine, one to one hundred and forty. Where's the other one? And now here's the. This is why I like partialing because when you're doing this, right, you don't need to be holding all the volume. You know, still sitting at a one to one hundred or one to one forty. Yeah, it's over a space of a few months, but you can keep paying yourself, paying yourself with the volumes. You know. Because these things are up. Look, how many pips were up? You know, so like, you know, 500 plus pips. So yeah, in terms of now, um, we do have some liquidity to the upside. So I, like, we, but, wait, so like, I'm just, like, so when you're trading, always create if then scenarios. So like, we do got some liquidity here. So I wouldn't be opposed if we did kind of see a shakeout like this to come lower. Um, that could happen. But again, that's not what price has done right now. Where we are now is we have this redistro over here. Um, and we are now, there's really two things that get me into this trade. It's either we can pop up. I want to see, if, this is a news candle as well. I want to see if we get distro in here. Um, again, a little bit lower probable because we've got liquidity um, and we could come higher and fill this. This is why you have to like weigh up the pros and cons and see how much you're willing to risk if it's worth it. So for me, there's really two scenarios on this. It's either we, I've got an alert sitting on this low. If we redistribute, and if we do, I'll play that. Or it's, are we going to come up? If we get a distro in here, this will be drastically, drastically reduced risk. Um, and obviously, like I'm not going to be eager to be taking that trade too. Um, but more importantly, I would much more prefer NCAD to work our way up here and then obviously give us a lower time frame distro in here. Now, if she doesn't distribute in here and she ends up breaking, I ain't going to be buying because of where we are in the higher time frames. And that's why I showed you that we could get that manipulation and that big shakeout. And this will just have to be a, a, a patient trade. Um, where if we did that, 
redistro and then just play the mitigation on it. Um, but yeah, I hope like this, like, you know, going through the Euro USD example at the start and now going through this example, um, I hope this kind of shows you guys like how you can start to invalidate trades as well. That was kind of my intention with this call is to show you guys how to actually invalidate setups as well. Um, you know, and then where you are. Um, let's check, check. Mm -hmm. oh, what's this? So if TP is just below the 80, would you still, um, if, T if TP is just below the 80, would you still enter because of spread of the broker? So when you set your limit order, right, um, let's say, for example, right, we're going to set a limit order of this 80%. For example, right? I can't set. I will go on my broker, and I will like. I don't care about trading views numbers. I'm not going to set my limit order on trading views point eight three four eight three. Right? I'm going to go measure this on my broker on MetaTrader, and I'm going to see what the number is because there's so many times where where the data feed from trading view is different to the data. Uh, the numbers, the data is different to numbers on your broker. Like for example, this number here could be up here if that makes sense, on your broker. So always check your broker and then check your spreads. So you, so let's say, for example, if we're taking an entry of here, obviously we're not. Not fucking 100 pips. Let's find a better example. Let's just do a random one. So let's just say for whatever reason, we're not, this is nothing valid. I'm just literally just trying to show the example of spreads. But let's just say, for example, we wanted to take a sell. I mean, there's nothing here. But let's just say, right, I'm, I'm, I, this is not a trade. This is just an example to explain spreads. There's nothing valid about this. There's no reason to be taking any trades or any buys for this. Do not take this buy. Do not take this trade. Don't take it. It's not a trade. Um, so, for example, it, like I can't put my entry on the 50 like this, right, because I need to encounter for spread. If spread is a pip, one pip, I need to put my entry one pip below. So I'll move my entry down, whatever the spread is. So spread is two pips, it goes lower two pips. Then my stop loss gets increased by whatever spread is. Does that make sense? Because if your entry is here and you haven't accounted for spread, right? If spread's two pips, it has to go two pips above your entry to account for the spread to get you filled. That's why we account for spread by putting our entry lower by whatever the spread is and the stop loss higher. If you're doing the buy side of things, so let's just say there's a random, um, there is no buys, but let's just say like for whatever reason, let's just pick a random area. Sorry, Mark. Let's just say for whatever reason we want to, again, if there's no reason to buy this, please don't buy this. Do not, um, let's just say for whatever reason we're going to go here. Right, and spread is one pip. Right, I can't have my entry on the 50, <clears throat> it has to be one pip above the 50 because that's what spread is. Does that make sense? And this is how you make sure you get filled on your orders because I see some people like they obviously all their markups are playing out, but they're just not getting filled because they're not accounting for spread. So you always add on your spread again. If it doesn't make sense, no problem, just let me know. Um, um to clarify there's metatrader for well it'll show you the bid it shows you the bid and the ask price on metatrader you can see the bid and the ask price but um the actual like candlesticks and the price you get is, is, is the basic both but just account for just uh, the, the easiest easiest way to do it is whatever the spread is literally the average spread literally just add that if you're buying go one pip above if you're selling go one pip below I like what you said about using the devil's advocate to invalidate the setup as well. Yeah, 100%. You know, because if, again, this is not a buy. Let me just delete this. No one takes it. Um, but yeah, like, for example, you know, if you're, okay, we can literally go back to where it was on Euro USD. Um, but if you guys like these calls, man, let me know. We can definitely do some more of these. Um, uh, where are we? So, like, again, all right. trying to take a buy out of here even though it was you know it was news it was quite nice but 
like we fail to break this hype. Like that, that these are questions you've got to ask yourself. You know, it's like if we, got, if we went through all this effort, why are we coming three pips shy? So they've got a different agenda. Agendas can change, it's okay. But this is why, like, and truth be told, this is what, like, as now as us, as retail traders, we don't know, the, always know the true agenda. It literally just takes, you know, the fund manager to say, guys, pull your, you know, because obviously you got to remember these funds, right? Okay, so how it works is this. So when like all this news comes out, it obviously is available. So how it works, there's a really good book about this. Um, I can I can recommend you guys. I forget the name of it. When I go back to Phuket in like two days, um, remind me and I'll put the book in the chat. I think I already sent it in the chat. No, I did. Yeah, I sent it in the chat already. You scroll up and you'll see it. Um, I forget. It's a it's a fundamentals book. Anyway, what happens is everyone gets everyone goes into a room. Their phones are off. There's no contact with the outside world, and they'll get the the actual news. They'll get the raw data. Now, let's say it's nine a.m. News comes out. That's when it gets available, made to the public, right? These inside, these institutions, these funds, they'll get it 30 minutes before. I mean, sometimes it, the, time, the time can change, but they'll be all locked in a room, right? They have the terminals open. And what they have to do is they have to synthesize all that information before it gets made public. Then they have to come out of the room and then submit it to the world so we get it. So we're getting it late. The only way you can get access to that is to get into the institution and actually be a part of it. But... um. And don't worry, we have that set up. When we have that set up, oh, I'll give you guys all the source. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this, the agendas can change quickly. This is why you have to think in sample sizes and not what, think about trading on a trade-by-trade basis. Because if you're like losing one trade and getting upset because it didn't play out, again, you you have the wrong thinking. You've got to remember, there's a lot bigger players who have a lot more information than us, and we're competing in one of the hardest games in the world. So um, this is why you have to think about this in the correct way to give yourself as much advantage as you have. You are the advantage. You are the edge. Um, um, mm -mm, yep, I got you, bro. Um, mm, if it's not clean, just change the screen. That hit me. Hey, I'm glad it did, bro. Man, I, I remember so many times, bro, when I was early. And again, if you have questions, guys, put it in the chat because we're going to wrap this up soon. Um, yeah. Like, I remember so many times, bro, when I was early in my trading career, like, and again, it comes from the intention, right? I wasn't mindful of the intention and why I was sitting in front of the computer. It was, oh, like, like a caveman. Oh, me want to trade, me want to make money. Go, go, go. Find setup, take trade, get slapped. Compared to where I'm at now, before I even go to computer, I look in the mirror, but this is a good way to do it. Look in the mirror and ask yourself a question. Like I talk to myself. I literally will sit in my office and I'll have a conversation with myself. I'll literally like talk to myself and ask myself questions. Why am I going to the charts? What am I doing? What is my intention here? And being mindful of it. Um, but yeah, bro, like, trust me, if there's not a setup there, don't force it. Um, that's the biggest thing. You know, like if you're looking at, anytime you look at the market and you're about to take a trade, put, like, put a sticky note on your computer, yeah? like when you're in front of your computer and ask yourself, what would my journal say about this? What would my journal say about this trade? If I lost this trade, would I kick myself? This trade here, like, if, let's be realistic. Yeah, is it annoying it didn't go to take profit? Yeah, of course. But here's the thing, right? You have to change the way you think and change what you deem is a good trade. It's not the outcome, it's the performance that leads to the outcome which creates the outcome you want. Like it's quite counterintuitive. You know, it's not about the outcome. It's about what you're doing to get there. So what I'm trying to say is, again, when you go in front of the computer, making sure you've got your intention set and you're not there to trade. You're there to manage risk and see if your plan presents itself. I'm not a trader. I'm a risk manager, right? This is a game of defense, right? My friends, <laughs> look, you guys know the story, right? About the... <laughs> You're funny, bro. But look, here's the thing, right? Actual funds. Do you really think, right, these guys wake up, right, with $100 million portfolios, billion dollar portfolios, et cetera, and they're like, how much money can we make today? No. They're thinking, how can we protect our money? They don't care about making the money. They care about protecting what they've got. But be defensive in this game. Trust me. There's, there's alg the algorithms that move these markets, the people that have access to, you know what I'm saying? Like all this stuff. 
they're, they're so ahead. So to put yourself in the best situation, you have to make sure that you're playing defensive. Like there's people out there that can move the markets. You know that. Like you can, like you can't move forex. There's so much money in there, but you can go like go on, like have a look on um some of the smaller cap cryptos, right? You can literally create candlesticks yourself. Like when you're buying and selling, you can literally manipulate the market yourself on small cap cryptos. So what I'm trying to say is because of that, this is why you have to start thinking in the correct way to give yourself an edge to be defensive. You know, like I imagine when I'm trading here, yeah, someone's trying, I like, I imagine, ah, here's a good example. You know, like when you're at, like at a train station or something and then you see the sign pickpocket, what do you do? You're on your alert. You're looking around where the pickpockets are, checking your wallet, checking your phone, right? That's how you got to be when you're trading. Thinking about, well, where's the devil's advocates? What reasons do I have to take this trade? But not just reasons to take the trade, reasons to not take the trade. And write a list of pros and cons. Literally just say, all right, bet. What re like literally write a list like this. A tal um, I forget what the chart's called, but like this. Pros, cons. Sell yourself on the idea of this trade. Talk to yourself. All right, bet. What, what reasons do I have to take this trade? Okay, cool. You know, we've got, you know, fundamentals. Bet we've got, you know, um, we're in, you know, higher time frame demand. Bet we've got lower time frame accumulation. You know what I mean? Like literally sit there, lay it all out. Now, if you're getting to the point where, you know, you have more pros than cons, take the trade. But now if you're looking at the cons, like, oh, you know, we're counter trend trading. Um, I'm just making things up for a second, right? Oh, we're counter trend trading. Oh, you know, we are, um, this, let's say we're buying and we're, and we're seeing price distro and fail to break. You know, it's wrong time of day. It's early in the week. It's like a Monday, right? And, um, you know, let's say we have no manipulation, you know, all this stuff. And now there's so many more reasons for price to not go in your favor. Don't take the trade. Yeah, it could work out in front of you, but that's why you have to change the metric you judge yourself on and say, you know what? That was a good decision because I stuck to my principles. However, let's say you're finding now that all the time, you know, like you're you're looking at certain trades and you're missing a bunch of trades because of certain things, collect data on it. If it's something that's happening loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of times, go on another account, add that principle and test it, forward test it. Start a new demo, start a small live account and say, bet, All right, here's my new principle. Let me test it and compare the data. And let's say you get to the end of your sample size and see the data, it's not worth it. And you're making, let's say you made 1% compared to your other system that made 5% or 6%. Clearly, this system is not as good. So you go back to what was working, but you know what you changed. The problem is people would take a trade, they lose one trade, find a million reasons why it lost, but then instantly change their plan. You have to collect data on it, right? So yes, you can jot all these things down, but if it happened one time, oh, out of 20 trades, I don't care. But if, I'm, if I've got 20 trades and 10 of my losses, 15 of my, let's just say 10 losses, 15 losses, are all because of Asia session, bet I'm now going to test to see the stop trade in Asia, another sample size of trades. Let's say now you lose 20 trades. Oh, clearly that didn't work. Now let's say instead of losing 15, you now win, uh, or, or let's say now you only lose 10 because you changed that one thing, you're evolving, you're getting better. And this is what trading is. Like this is how you get better as a trader. It's, like, it's not going to be that one day you just wake up and bang, you're in a penthouse in Bangkok. No, it's, you're taking your trades, you get your sample size done. You go back, you review your journal, you change one thing. You go take another sample size of trades, you compare the data between the two. And it's that small incremental changes that will compound over time. Some of the time, like a lot of the times, it's not that we're doing the wrong things. Sometimes we just haven't done enough of the right things. Sometimes you've got to increase your volume. You know, if you flip a coin, right, and it lands on heads five times, we're not going to say that coin is dominated by heads, are we? We're going to simply flip the coin more. Um, but like psychology is a really big part of this, man. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, any other questions? I'm just catching up with the chat. Let me know. You know when you journal your trades and you get to choose which type of trade you took? Do you have a picture of all different types that are on that list? Um, what I'll do when I get back to Phuket, because my journal is on my other computer, um, what I'll do is I'll create a video for you guys. Let me just write this down. I'll create a video, guys, on a bit like more into like to explain the journal. Uh, I don't know. 
I, to be honest, bro, in the um in the videos, the lower time frame entry schematic videos, there are breakdowns of them actually. But I can do it again if you want. Um Hopefully during the your session and uh, PST. Uh no, yeah, let's take my holiday. Yeah. I mean, either way, these calls will be recorded. Um and we'll, we'll get it done. But yeah, guys, does anyone have any other final questions? Um, I mean Euro USD, I ain't considering any buys out of this really right now, just considering that we failed to break this high. We had all that effort and the news that just collapsed. Um, I think this is probably gonna turn into a redistro. Um This could, I mean, we still got a bit more room to work our way down to the 80. Um, so this could be the start of a bigger schematic to send us. But we'll see how price develops. Um, um, let's see where we are. Yeah, GU could probably work our way down a little bit lower. You probably get some um, scalps on GU. Uh, uh, uh. Where are we? Oh, this is the news. This looks good. I really like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, do this. So, what I'm seeing here is looks like we're so looks like because we, we don't really have like demand just here, we've got a little bit lower to come for demand. So we could get some shorts to bring it down to that demand. I just wanted to confirm this redistro. Um, do that. Maybe the second happened today. Mm, realistically, maybe Wednesday. Play a schematic of that. I mean, yeah, we need to we need to break that low. Mm, yeah, there's zero volume from the buyers. Um, yeah, I really like this redistro. Look at that. Look how sexy. The, like, look how organized it is. Micro distros, micro distros, orders, shake out on the news. This is a really nice POI. Ooh. Let's inspectigate. I just wanna, I'm trying to see now like, if there's any micros in here that are unmitigated. Mm -hmm. No, but yeah, this is still a nice redistro for a POI. If we can break that low, it's a sexy trade. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that for GU. Mm -mm -mm. Set a lot on the low. Mm. All right, let's catch up with the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the recording will be available. It just has to convert. Um, I don't need to head to the mall quick. So I'll, if it converts before I leave, I'll sit in the chat today. If not, I'll send it later when I get home. Um, what well, you said. Yeah, not not here. I'm not interested in here because it's in like we've got it's not valid demand, but like I'll kick myself. No, here's the thing. Why can we not just break this low? Why can we not just break this low? You know, do that, put some liquidity above here, shake out, come and mitigate off the news, send it lower.
Because we're like we're playing. Because here's the thing, right? Like this redistro hasn't done anything. This just maintains order flow of order flow of order flow. We're playing the bigger redistro. This is the bigger redistro. This is our this is our ice. We need to break the ice and confirm the sign of weakness. Like we're seeing sellers show up, but I just need to see how strong they are. Um. So, yeah. Um. So yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, increase the possibility to trade. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of like the rest of the markups, I need to really do that. Um, I mean, it's early in the week. We've obviously got bank holiday today, so I'm not really looking to be taking any trades today. Monday, bank holiday, fucking September, very low liquidity months, so I'm not interested to be trading today. Um, yeah. I want to see what happens around like Wednesday. I got you, bro. I'm glad this helps. So yeah, obviously the main intention of this call was just to kind of break down the difference with like invalidating setups rather than just always trying to validate a setups. And like the biggest kind of thing I want you guys to to take away from this call is the mindset thing behind it, man. Like a lot of these invalidation principles as well, you can develop from your own journal because we all have our own individual habits too. But the bigger thing is the mindset, right? Intention before you go to the chart. Confirmation bias, like homework. Go and research confirmation bias. Confirmation bias, you like if you go to the chart and you're looking to take a trade, your brain will literally trick you into seeing trades that are not even good trades. And then and what will happen in the moment, it would feel good. And after, you look back at it and journal it and be like, fuck, why did I take this trade? I don't know why I took this trade. What was I thinking? And now you're going to enter a negative spiral, right? The reason you did that is because your emotions and you was unconscious. You was being mindless, right? Big up Randy Howe, right? I sent some of his books in the in the chat. If you haven't read the workbook and the mindful trading audios, you need guys like this super important, you know, remember this. I'm going to, final thing, unless anyone has any questions. You don't see reality as it is. Everyone on this call is experiencing this call and perceiving the words that I'm saying differently because we all have our own individual belief systems. You don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are, right? So for example, let's say, you know, you're, you're in a bad mood. Someone can be nice to you and do a nice favor for you, for you and you can perceive it negatively. Or you can be in a good mood and someone can say something negative to you and you just don't care. You let it bounce off you because your state of mind, right? Your state of mind is the biggest key in the world. If you spend all your time developing your technical analysis system, that's literally just developing one side of your brain. Remember, we have two sides, left side and right side. Your One side is responsible for emotions and log uh, a more emotional side of things. And the other side of the brain is responsible for more logic. When you like, don't get me wrong, back testing is important, right? Studying technicals is important, but it's half of the battle. It's like, if we go gym, we only train our right arm. Oh, you're getting big there. <laughs> we only trade our right arm, right? Bro, we're going to have some mad ass skinny arm on the left and we're going to look weird. And then when we try to do bench press, we're going to be going like this and fall over because we've got an imbalance. So when you're trading, if you're experiencing problems on your trading account and your like, MetaTrader 4 is red, it's because you're red inside. There's something in your head that you have to fix, which is most likely the fact that you're probably not spending enough time working on yourself and your emotions. This That was the biggest obstacle I had to overcome. Like, and that's why I talk about it so much because I think that was the big, biggest defining moment, right? The strategy is irrelevant. If the strategy was the most important thing, like you could literally, like you could literally, they've done experiments about this. You could literally go to the market, flip a coin, press buy or sell. And if you have good risk management, over time, you'll be profitable. They've literally done systems like that. But here's the thing. To get consistent results, you need a consistent approach. Why do we not have consistent approaches? It's because we have an underdeveloped emotional side of the brain. When you spend enough time developing that, how do you do that? L look at the things I put in the chat. I'll, I'll resend them again if I have them. But I put a, a really good workbook in the chat. Um my bad. Yeah, I put a really good workbook in the chat. Um Go read that. Um, to start developing your your mindset, start doing the belief examination program. You know, look look at look. Take these names: Randy Howe, Van K. Farp. Randy Howe and Van. I'll put it in the chat. Right, these guys here: Randy Howe, 
Van K. Tharp. Um, Trading Beyond the Matrix. Read that. Listen to that. Um, Randy Howes. Our Mindful Trader. Mark Douglas. How to Think Like a Pro Trader. Then, once you get all this information, now you've got to apply it. How do you apply it? You have to, you've got to do the internal work. The internal work, it is this way. It's really simple. What it is, is literally just sitting down and having a conversation with yourself and basically just brainstorming. What beliefs do I hold? And self auditing yourself. Maybe we'll do a whole call on that because I do have to shoot in a second. But have conversations. Be mindful of, of what you're doing. Um, be mindful of the actions you're taking. Um, be conscious, right? Be aware, right? Talk to yourself, right? Because what you need to do, you need to create the habit to do that. Remember, our lives, we've evolved as humans to be on autopilot because if you have to think about your heartbeat in every second, bro, it's long, you know what I mean? So we developed to put a lot of things on autopilot. So you need to create a new habit. To create a new habit of bringing yourself being more conscious, being more mindful when you're trading, you need to trigger, you need something to trigger the habit. The easiest way to do that is set an alarm on your phone. I have an alarm that goes off my, on my phone every single hour to do what? Literally just to bring myself back to the present moment. It's so easy for us to get caught up in our heads in the fast paced reality of the world. Have alarms on your phone to remind you, you know, in, in your office. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm just here on an Airbnb, but in my office uh, in Phuket, I have fucking paper everywhere. I've shown some of you guys, like I literally have walls, paper. What's on that? What's on there? Stick from like schematics printed out from uh, on my whiteboard, little things that I need to work on with myself and my psychology and my trading. Right? No one's perfect. You're always going to have things to work on, but have things everywhere because what is out of where you stare is where you steer, right? Where you stare is where you steer. What are you exposing yourself to every day? Right? Making sure you're listening to these audios every day. You're doing the right things to work on yourself. You're journaling your trades from a quantitative standpoint and a qualitative standpoint, not just technicals, right? When I take a trade, I look at it from two sides, left brain, right brain, left brain, logic, technicals, chart, validation principles. Is it valid? Then if it's, let's say it's a trade wasn't valid, you got to look deeper. Why did you take that trade that wasn't valid? What made you perceive that? What emotional belief? Because every single act is BAR, belief, action, results. Every result you have comes from the action you do. Every action you take comes from the belief that you hold. If you want new results, you have to reverse engineer it, right? What beliefs, what, what is going on in your head that's causing you to make those decisions, causing you to do those things? Sit that homework, pen and paper, no music, no lyrics, in your room, 30 minutes at a time, or be by yourself for 30 minutes. Take a few seconds just to get your chi, channel your energy, become present. Slow, conscious, diaphragmic breath work. Bring yourself back to the present moment. Get a pen and paper. Write your name down. Put a circle off there. What do I value? What, what beliefs do I hold? What do I believe about trading? What do I believe about money? What do I believe about success? And brainstorm it. Okay, what do I believe about trading? Bet, I be or what do I believe about money? I'm just going to freestyle some things that I used to believe. For example, money. What does Kieran Davis believe about money? You know, what does Kish Bali believe about money? What does Antonio, what does Albert, what do you believe about money? Hmm. I'm, like, there's no right or wrong answers. It's the first thing that comes to mind. It's the intuitive thought. Um, for example, when I did it, the first thing, money is hard to acquire was the first thing. Hmm. Money is hard to get. I have to work hard to make money. And then, and then you have to go, it's like an onion, right? There's layers. Hmm. Well, where, why do I believe this? Why do I believe money's hard to acquire? Oh, because for me to make money at the time, right? I was working in Sainsbury's for 12 hours, pushing trolleys in the fucking pissing down car park all day. Oh, doing 50,000 steps. Hmm. Look at, oh, okay. Well, what about my environment? Okay. My dad was working night shifts, doing scaffolding and cleaning for 12, for literally 12 to 16 hours sometimes every day and we so i'm seeing my like so i'm seeing my family working hard my upbringing working hard and we still didn't have any money we lived in a one-bedroom flat in southeast london peckham and the ceiling was fucking crumbling down we'd, we'd get a mcdonald's like once for every let's say once get a mcdonald's once twice a year is like wow we'll get a mcdonald's like you know what i mean so being in that environment put a belief that I held about money but here's the thing it was unconscious i wasn't aware of those beliefs and because I wasn't aware of it, those beliefs were driving my actions and they were driving my results. 
because I would believe that I need to work hard. I need to do something to get money. So when I would now trade, that belief would cause me to overtrade. That belief would cause me to spend too much time trying to hunt for a trade. And then obviously produce the um, the result. So the, the purpose of this is to figure out what belief you hold, why you hold that belief, and where it came from. Here's the key. Here's the key. Here's the key. Where did that belief come from? The problem is, here's the problem. We identify so much with our thoughts and our beliefs. You, we think we are our thoughts. And that's the problem. Because you're not your thoughts. Oh, wait, what? He said you're not your thoughts. You are the awareness of your thoughts. So here's the thing, right? Because we identify so much of our belief system, we hold on to it. We don't want to let it go. Right? If you want different, you've got to do different. It all starts with your head. So once you realize, okay, well, did I choose this belief? Did I choose to believe money is hard to acquire? I didn't choose it. Where did it come from? Oh, my family. This, And once you realize that, you didn't choose that belief that you hold. And again, you have to sit down and question it. It's not, it's not the same. This is not something I can teach you. I can teach, I tell you what to do, but you have to experience this, guys. You have to actually sit down and have that conversation with yourself. And it's not a one-time thing. It's something you do all the time. Um, yeah, so once you realize that that's not your belief, what happens is it loses hold on you, right? It's like this grip starts to loosen a little bit. Because here's the thing. The reason your affirmations don't work, right, is because... You, you, it's like this bet this bag it's actually empty but let's pretend it's full this bag was full right and i'm now trying to put this stuff in there right and i'm trying to fill it up it's just going to pile and over, overflow if i want to put new stuff in there i've got to remove all the old stuff first right you can't just be doing affirmations and thinking your life's going to change right this is why you can't just be doing back testing all day and studying all day and think you're going to be a better be a better you could be a better analyst but you won't be a better trader Remember, analytical skills is the charts. There's a difference between being a good analyst and a good trader. Trading is when you combine both sides of the brain, logic, technical analysis, and emotions, self-control, managing your belief system, and just self-mastery, right? So what I'm saying is by doing this belief examination process, you're auditing the beliefs you hold. You're realizing that, wait a minute, these beliefs are not conducive to my success. They're not beneficial for me. So then you realize excuse me, you then realize that, okay, this is something I didn't choose. And now this is where this, is where this shift starts to happen. Because now you realize you can choose the belief you want and you can transmute that energy. Transmutation, turning one form of energy into another. So if you've got a belief, everything's on a spectrum, right? Good, bad, hot, and cold. So if you've got a belief system that money is hard to acquire, if you've got a belief system that, again, all this, like, oh, it's trading's hard, all this stuff, right? You have to be able to change that. How you change that is like we said, sitting down, having that conversation with yourself, obviously like to get more prompts for yourself. This is where things like this, these calls come in, obviously the brand, the people I put in the chat earlier, um, to give you the prompts, then you've got to sit down and do it. Like this is not, this is not passive. This is active. You have to sit down and actually do this work because what will happen now is like we said, belief, actions, results. And now you'll find that you're start trading a lot more harmony. Because now you're coming from a place. It's not what you do, it's the place it comes from. You're now coming from a place of abundance, right? You're coming with, because remember, right? You don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are, right? You see it through the lens of your belief system, the lens of your emotions, just like these Cartier frames, right? You, I see the world. If these are blue, I'm going to see the world blue, right? These are rose gold. So I'm seeing the world rose, rose gold. If you're if you've got a belief system where money's hard to acquire, try all this stuff, right? It can get like I don't know the beliefs you hold. I don't know your childhood. I don't know how you was brought up. I don't know your attachment styles. This is stuff you have to figure out. That's another buzzword: attachment style. Look into that. Re obviously, do you, do you, everything I sent you guys those those names they will literally get you right. But what I'm saying is, by doing that, just to kind of bring it full circle now, is you're gonna sit down audit your beliefs, you're then going to release that belief, get rid of it, now you can transmute it and you consciously choose and create the self-image of the person you want to be, right? The whole the master of coin isn't just because it sounds cool. I had to become the master of coin, right? I create a superhero version of myself. 
right? And I became that person. You become the designer of your life. So create that seven-figure trader. How would they walk? How would they talk? How would they feel? What would they be doing? You know, are they gonna, what are they gonna do? How they get, you, know, you see, what I'm, see what I'm saying here? And now begin to change that belief system. At first, you feel a bit weird, but through repetition, you'll form it. And what will happen now is you're now developing the emotional side of your brain, right? You also learn how to self-regulate emotions. You'll learn impulse control, right? But none of that stuff will work until you get to the root cause of it and actually change the wiring of your brain. It sounds a lot harder than it is, but like it's really just a conversation, guys, with yourself um, and just kind of figuring out why you tick, why, why you're doing these things. So when I'm journaling my trades, it's not just, oh, technicals, because trust me, there's bro, technicals is like a is like a black hole, man. Like that that shit, there's always reasons, there's always some sort of magical thing people come up with. But that's why you have your principles and you have your sample size, right? Because you're keeping everything the same. And now you have your quantitative data and now your qualitative data. Why did you perceive it like that? What was you doing? What belief systems? What thought process did you have behind that? Does that make sense? And that's how you become this is what you need to do. You need to put both together. Now, when you get on the bench press, both your arms are the same size, so you can do it with ease. You're not falling over the place. So now when you're trading, it's going to be nice and smooth. It's not going to be chaotic. Because now you're going to have a consistent approach. The thing that stops your approach being consistent is, from the technical side, maybe, is not training your eye enough. But then the emotional side is clouding your judgment. Like, I, I, I really need you guys to understand this. Like, you literally see the world through the lens of your emotions and your belief system. Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's the world's a mirror, bro. Like, you you project. That's the best word. You project, right? You project, not what the world is. Is how you want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why, for example, right? Someone could look at, I don't know. Someone could look at this hat and be like, I don't like that hat, and someone could look at it like I do like it. The hat's the same. The hat, the, this doesn't matter. It's the perception, how they're perceiving it. And your perception is programmed by your belief system. Ooh. And that is my TED talk. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, so in terms of like homework and actionable steps, um, yeah, come on, my guy. Uh, read up on those on those names I put in the chat. Um, and, you know, spend some time today, man, or whenever you can, like 20 minutes, and just have self audit yourself, man. What do I believe? Why do I believe this? Where did it come from? In terms of your technicals, the invalidation principles we went through, making sure you're you're validating the schematics, right? You're seeing the orders being filled. You're seeing your phase. You can validate phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D. Talk through. Look at a schematic, right? Yes, cool. You are, you put a box around it. Say, okay, sellers turn it into buyers. You know, um, buyers turn it into more buyers. Cool, right? You, you've identified the schematic, but now you've got to validate it. See where we're going with this. So identify it, then validate it. If you can't validate it, get rid of it. Um, and then from there, to follow through with that, this is where obviously your emotions got to come in and that self control. But yeah, um, with that being said, guys. Um, I'm going to do another stream. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll do another call this week. Uh, realistically, uh, I'm just trying to think because I'm going back to Phuket tomorrow late. Let me try, uh, Wednesday, I've got to get some work done on my teeth. So, it dep depends on how the dentist goes, guys. I might do it Wednesday um, just because I don't want to analyze a, a fucking broken mouth. You know what I mean? Um so Thursday, 100% will do it. We're going to do one this week on technicals. It's either going to be Thursday or Wednesday. I just need to see how the dentist goes on Wednesday, honestly. Um, yeah, let me stop recording there. But I just need to see how that goes. So I don't know the 